فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has placed us in this world and He has given us a duration, a period of time in which we will be staying in this world and then after that time is over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us another place in which we're going to stay at and that is what my topic or my talk inshallah ta'ala today will be about the Salaf of this Ummah, the pious predecessors they knew that their period or their duration in which they are in this world it's a time to prepare for that day in which they go to their graveyard and they used to worry and it used to scare them a lot Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi he narrated in his Sunan bi sanadin hasan with a chain of narration which is authentic that Hani Mawla Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala anhum Hani who was the Mawla of Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said kana Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu idha waqafa ala qabrin baka hatta yabulla lihyatah that Uthman ibn Affan used to be one if he stood over a grave he would cry until his beard was full of tears. قال فقيل له it was then said to Uthman تذكر الجنة والنار ولا تبكي You mention and you remember the Jannah and you remember the Nar and you don't cry. وتبكي من هذا and you cry because of this grave. You cry about the grave. فقال he said إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال he said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Al-Qabr awwal manzil min manazil al-akhirah He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the grave is the first stage from the stages of the hereafter فَإِن نَجَى مِنْهُ Anyone who finds success Anybody who pass the test in the grave فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَيْسَرُ مِنْهُ Everything that comes after the grave is easy for him. وَإِن لَمْ يَنْجُ مِنْهُ And if the person doesn't make it through the grave فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَشَدَّ مِنْهُ Everything that comes after it is going to be even harder and he's going to, going to struggle even more. And then he said that the Prophet ﷺ went on to say in ما رأيت I have never seen منظرا إلا والقبر أفضع منه. The Prophet said I never saw something, a image, except that the grave was the worst of those which I saw, the most scariest, the most terrorizing image that I've ever seen. So brothers and sisters, Uthman رضي الله تعالى عنه a man who was promised Jannah alive whilst he was in this world. Allah promised him it subhanahu wa ta'ala and here you see him crying until his beard is full of tears because what he understood was that the grave is the first stage to the stages of the hereafter and that it requires effort and working brothers and sisters we have never seen two days and two nights anything like it there are two days and there are two nights. Human beings have never seen the likes of it. Ibn Abi Dunya in his Ahwalu Yawm Al Qiyamah, he mentions a statement of Hassan al Basri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah. He said, Yawmani wa laylatani lam tasma'il khala'iqu bi mithlihinna qattu. Hassan al Basri said, Two days and two nights. The creation have never heard the likes of it. They've never heard the likes of it. Laylatun a night. Tabitun ma'a ahli al-quburi. Walam tabit laylatan qablaha. The first night is the night 
the person spends with the people of the grave. Your first night in the grave is a night that you have never seen a light like it. The second night is what? وَلَيْلَةٌ صَبِحَتُهَا يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ And the night which it's morning is the day of judgment. The night which it's morning is going to be the day of judgment. Those two nights, the creation have never seen the likes of it, Hassan al-Basri said. The two days are what? وَيَوْمَ يَأْتِيكَ الْبَشِيرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِمَّا بِالْجَنَّةِ وَإِمَّا بِالنَّارِ the day that the warner comes to you or the one that's giving you glad tidings comes to you he either tells you that you're going to Jannah there's no day like it or he comes and he tells you that you're going to be from the people of hellfire the creation have never seen a day like this and the second day is وَيَوْمَ يُعْطَى كِتَابَكَ إِمَّا بِيَمِينِكَ وَإِمَّا بِشِمَالِكَ the day in which your book is going to be given to you either by the right or the left. The creation have never seen a day like this. It is two days and it's two nights the creation have never seen the likes of it. Brothers, our messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made sure that he emphasized on this message which is to tell his companions to prepare for this day. The day in which they're going to meet Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Al-Bara ibn Azim radhi Allah Ta'ala anhu. He said, Baynama nahnu namshi ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Ith absara jama'atan minan nasi faqala. Ala majtama'a haulai. Qila ala qabrin yahfiruna. Bara ibn Azim he said, As we were walking with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama one day. إذ أبصر the messenger saw جماعة من الناس a group of people gathered together and then the messenger said على مجتمع هؤلاء why have these people come together why have they gathered together and it was then said to him قيل على قبر يحفرون oh messenger of Allah they came together because of a graveyard or a grave that in which they are digging فَفَزِعَ النَّبِيُّ The messenger became scared عليه الصلاة والسلام فَبَدَرَ بَيْنَ أَصْحَابِهِ مُسْرِعًا The messenger he ran fast in front of his companions حَتَّى انْتَهَى إِلَى الْقَبْرِ Until the messenger came to the grave فَجَثَى عَلَيْهِ The messenger fell down on his knees وَاسْتَقْبَلْتُ وَاسْتَقْبَلَ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ Bara ibn al-Azim he said I came and I walked in front of the messenger. I wanted to see what he was going to do. I wanted to see his reaction. فَبَكَى صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ The messenger cried. حَتَّى بَلَّ الثَّرَى مِن دُمُوعِهِ Until the tears that came from the eyes of the messenger. It filled the sand on the ground. ثُمَّ أَقْبَلَ عَلَيْنَا Then the messenger turned back towards the companions. And then he said to them, إِخْوَانِي مَي بَرَذَرَزْ لِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْيَوْمِ فَاعِدُّوهُ The likes of this day, prepare for it. The likes of this day in which you see, prepare for it. Make sure you have put effort forward. Make sure that you have stayed away from that which you have been prohibited from. لِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْيَوْمِ فَاعِدُّوهُ The likes of this day to prepare for it. This hadith, no one narrated it from Abdullah, Bara ibn al-Azim, he said Abdullah ibn Waqidin radhi Allah ta'ala anhu. That is the only individual who narrated it from him. Brothers and sisters, Wallahi, don't let it deceive you. Don't let it trick you. How the graveyards are from the outside and how they all look the same. Don't let it deceive you. For verily, Wallahi, it is different from beneath. If, it, if you were to be shown what's underneath this ground, you would have seen that a group of people have rawda min riyad al-jannah. They are in a garden from the gardens of Jannah. And another group of people, brothers, are in what? They are fi huf, a min nar. They are in a pit from the pits of the hellfire. So the matter is different from beneath the earth. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn Samak he said, لَا يَغُرَّنَّكَ Do not let it deceive you. سُكُوتِ هَذِهِ الْقُبُورِ Do not let, let it deceive you. 
the calmness of the grave from the outside. فما أكثر المغمومين فيها ولا يغرنك استواءها فما أشد تفاوتهم Do not let it deceive you how it looks like from the outside for how much of them are being punished. How many of them are being punished because they did not do that which Allah has told them to do. They did not follow the command of their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also don't get deceived by how they all look leveled because their stages and their ranks and their positionings are different. Wallahi it is the case. It is different. And our messenger told us alayhi salatu wassalam and Imam Tirmidhi he narrated in his sunan Min hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Abu Huraira said that the messenger said Iza qubira al-mayyitu aw qala ahadukum That the messenger said if one of you He takes the dead person And he is being placed in the graveyard He's dead And he's being put in the grave The messenger said And he's left The messenger said Atahu malakani aswadani azraqan Two angels who are black and dark, whose eyes are blue, they come. يُقَالُ لِأَحَدِهِمَا One of them is called الْمُنْكَرُ وَالْآخَرُ النَّكِيرُ And the second one is called Nakir. فَيَقُولَانِ They will both say, مَا كُنْتَ تَقُولُ فِي هَذَا الرَّجُلِ What do you say about this man? Meaning the messenger. فَيَقُولُ مَا كَانَ يَقُولُ This individual who is the righteous one. The true believer, the one who followed the commands of Allah, the one who, who watched his actions and his movements, he watched his lips and that which he says, who stayed away from zina and haram, who stayed away from shurbul khamr, who stayed away from every act which Allah prohibited. And if he did something that wasn't permissible, he ran back to his Lord and repented. This is the one. What is he going to say? He will reply by saying, this individual is the prophet, is the slave and a messenger of Allah. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Wa anna Muhammad and Abduhu wa Rasuluh. And that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. I testify to that. Fayaqulani the two angels will say, Qad kunna na'lamu annaka taqulu hadha. We knew that you were going to say this. ثم يفسح له في قبره سبعون ذراعا في سبعين، and then his grave is then open for him. It is made wide open. Seventy ذراعه ذراع is a hand's span. It would be made seventy of it. ثم ينور له فيها and then it would be lit for him. It will it won't be dark anymore. And the space is so big, and it's lit for him. ثم يقال له and then it will be said to him. Nam sleep. Fayakulu the man would then say to the two angels, Arji ila ahli, take me back to my family. Fauchbiruhum so I can tell them. Fayakulani they will say to him, Nam sleep. Kanaumatil arus. This one wants to go back to his people and he wants to tell his family the good that he has received. He wants to say, I passed the test. Because this test, there's no test like it. There's no test like it. And if you pass, as I said before in the hadith of Hani Mawla, Umar, uh, Mawla Uthman, that if you pass, then min, anyone who makes it through, فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَيْسَرُ مِنُ Everything after it is, is easy for you. They will say to him, Nam sleep. How like it? How is he going to sleep? Nam kanawmati al-arus alladhi la yuqidhuhu illa ahabu ahlihi ilayhi hatta yab'athahu Allahu min madji'i dhalik. Sleep. Sleep like the one who just got married. The one that just got married, sleep like him. And no one is going to wake him up. Because the one who just got married, no one wakes him up except the most beloved person to him. No one's going to wake him up. He's going to enjoy himself, have a nice sleep until the day of judgment. The second one is the munafiq, the hypocrite. Iman and Islam was a mere claim. It was, that, it was something that he just said it for the sake of saying it. It didn't settle into his heart. He will say, سَمِعْتُ, سمعت النَّاسَ يَقُولُونَ I heard the people say, فَقُلْتُ مِثْلَهُ I said exactly what the people said. لا أدري, I don't know who this person you guys are asking me about. I only said what the people said. فَيَقُولَانِ They would then say to him, قَدْ كُنَّا نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ تَقُولُ ذَلِكَ We knew that you were going to say that. Because they know they were writing everything he used to do. They were aware of his harakat and his sakanat. 
his movements and his silences. They knew him. فَيُقَالُ لِلْأَرْضِ And then it will be said to the earth, إِلْتَئِمِي عَلَيْهِ Come together onto him. فَتَلْتَئِمُ عَلَيْهِ The walls of the grave and the earth will come together and it will squeeze him. The Prophet then said, فَتَخْتَلِفُ فِيهَا أَضْلَاعُ His ribs will pass one another. They will cross each other through. فَلَا يَزَالُ فِيهَا مُعَذَّبًا He will remain being punished like that, screaming and shouting. حَتَّى يَبْعَثُهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ مَضْجِعِهِ ذَلِكَ Until the day of judgment comes. Until the day of judgment comes, he will be punished like that. This hadith, and Imam Tirmidhi narrated it on the authority of Abu Huraira and Shaykh al-Albani, he considered this hadith to be Hassan. Ikhwani and Akhawati, Bukhari and Muslim also narrated, and this is all to emphasize on what? That wallahi, the graves, they may look like the same when it comes from the apparent or from the outer, but from beneath, wallahi, it's not the same. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. He said that the messenger said, Inna ahadakum ida mata, if one of you dies, عرض عليه مقعده بالغدات والعشي, that he will be shown in the morning and the evening, he will be shown his place. إن كان من أهل الجنة فمن أهل الجنة وإن كان من أهل النار فمن أهل النار فيقال هذا مقعدك حتى يبعثك الله يوم القيامة. If he's from the people of Jannah, he will be placed, shown his place in Jannah. And if he's from the people of the hellfire, he will be shown his place in the hellfire. Uh, his place in the hellfire. And they would say to him, هذا مقعدك and this is your place حتى يبعثك الله يوم القيامة until Allah سبحانه وتعالى resurrects you from the death until the, the day of judgment. Ikhwani, our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was one day on his riding beast. He was on his riding beast. Imam Muslim narrated this hadith in his sahih on the authority of Zayd ibn Thabit that the Prophet was on his riding beast alayhi salatu wa salam and he was in a ha'it li Bani Najjar. The people of Bani Najjar, he was in a garden of theirs. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he was on his riding beast, ala baghlatin lahu, and we were with him, Zayd ibn Thabit said, we were with the, we were with the messenger, إذ كادت إذ حادت به فكادة القيه it moved so fast it was about to throw the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام the riding beast فكادة القيه it ran so fast that it was about to throw our messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم فكادة القيه وإذا وإذا أقبر ستة أو خمسة أو أربعة there were five or four graves right there there were five or four graves right there the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said من يعرف أصحاب هذه الأقبر Who is the one who knows the people of these graves? Why? Why did the riding beast run? The riding beast ran because the people in the graves that are being punished, the riding beast heard it. The animals, they hear the screaming of those who are in the grave. So it heard. So the messenger looked at the graveyards and he said, من أصحاب هذه الأقبر Who are the people who are in this grave? Who are they? What are they? فقال رجل أيمان said, a man said, I know, O Messenger of Allah. The Messenger said, فَمَتَى مَاتَ هَؤُلَاءِ When did these people die? The man said, مَاتُوا فِي الْإِشْرَاكِ They died upon shirk, O Messenger of Allah. Then the Messenger then said, the messenger then said إِنَّ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةُ تُبْتَلَى This nation is going to be tested in their graveyards. In their graves, sorry. The, this Ummah, they're going to be tested in their graves. فَلَوْلَّا أَلَّا تَدَافَنُوا لَدَعُوتُ اللَّهَ يُسْمِعَكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبَرِ if it was not, if I was not scared that you guys would not bury the dead, I would have asked Allah to make you hear those who are being punished in their graveyards. The adab al-qabr, so you can hear it. I would have asked Allah. Then the messenger turned towards us. And then he said, Seek refuge in Allah from the punishment of the grave. Qalu the sahabas, adhering, submitting companions they were. They said, "Na'udhu billahi." We seek refuge in Allah min adab al-nar. We seek refuge in Allah from the punishment of the hell, the fire. فقال فقال the Prophet then said, "Ta'awudhu billahi min adab al-qabr." Ta'awudhu billahi min adab al-qabr. And the Sahaba they said, "Na'udhu billahi min adab al-qabr." Brothers and sisters, there are things that cause people to go and go through that punishment of the graveyard or the grave. The adab al-qabr, brothers, there are asbab. There are things that cause it. And if a person comes with it, he will be punished. 
Adabul Qabr, you will go through it. From those things, brothers, are number one, and Namima. You go around and you tell people, Fulan said this about you, Alan said this about you, and you try to bring between the Muslims, and you try to bring between them disunity, you try to bring between them problems. Instead of extinguishing the problem, you bring the problem up. Imagine, my brothers and sisters, if the issue is between the scholars, if a person is trying to run from one scholar to another scholar so he can make the ties of relationship between those two scholars go, what is the matter going to be? The second one, Ikhwani, is Adam Tanazuhi min al Baul. To not protect yourself from the urine. To not protect yourself from the urine. Our messenger said on the two that I just mentioned, a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas. The hadith is in Sahihain, Bukhari, and Muslim. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّهُمَا لَيُعَذَّبَانِ These in two individuals are being punished. The Prophet came by, مَرَّ عَلَىٰ قَبْرَيْنِ The Prophet came by two graves. And then he said, إِنَّهُمَا لَيُعَذَّبَانِ These two people in their graves are both being punished. وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ And they are not being punished on something big. What does the Messenger mean by they are not being punished on something big? What the Messenger means is, it is something that was easy for them to stay away from. It was something easy for them to stay away from. It doesn't mean that it's not something big in its punishment. Of course it is. Adabul Qabr is coming from it. But what it means is that it is so easy for you to stay away from it, my, my, my beloved brothers and sisters. The first one is, Amma ahaduhuma. The first one is, فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَتِرُ مِنَ الْبَوْلِ He never used to protect from himself or he didn't used to clean himself from the urine. If the urine went on him, he would let it be on him. Or he wouldn't protect himself from the urine in the first place. The flu he will urinate on places where the urine will come back to him again. He would urinate standing up. He would urinate standing up on a place where the urine will come back on him. The second one, brothers, is وَأَمَّا الْآخَرُ فَكَانَ يَمْشِي بَيْنَ فَكَانَ يَمْشِي بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالنَّمِيمَةِ the second one is he used to go between the people and he used to spread news between them two. And say, Akhi, do you know what so-and-so said about you? He said this about you. So-and-so Wallahi, brother, I'm not sly. This is what he said about you. This is Namima. The person should stay away from it. He should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, another narration, it mentions, instead of Namima, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the narration of Imam Ahmad, an tabarani bi sanadin sahih, has sahih. On the, on the authority of who lakin? Not, 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 not Ibn Abbas, but the authority of Abi Bakr and Nufayr ibn Harith al-Thaqafi that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said ghiba, backbiting. Backbiting. Backbiting, brothers, is the third one. Backbiting brings, so the Prophet went to two graveyards, he said one of them, he used to backbite. And the other one, he never used to protect himself from the urine. That's another narration. Some people today, brothers, they try to make, justify themselves Try to give them excuses. They backbite somebody and they say to themselves, I'm protecting the religion. As Jarh wa Ta'adil, Akhi Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, you can't deceive him. Wallahi, you can't deceive him. Wallahi, you can't. Al Jarh wa Ta'adil has its qawaid and its usul and its dawabid. It has its principles. It has its things to be preserved and looked after. And Al Ghiba is something that the Sharia placed. It's like those who drink khamar. And then when they drink khamar, they call it what? A good name. Interest is what they call riba. Yusammunahu bighayr ismi. They change its name. That doesn't change the reality. Al-jarh al-ta'adil is something that is permissible, but with its shurut, with its dawabit, with its conditions and everything met. And Imam al-Tahawi, he narrated his mushkil al-athar. عن authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال that the messenger said أمر بعبد a slave was ordered من عباد الله it was ordered for a slave from the slaves of Allah أن يضرب في قبره so he can get whipped in his grave مئة جلدة a hundred whips فلم يزل the man never stopped except asking Allah يا الله اللهم خفف Oh Allah, lessen it for me. Oh Allah, less, oh Allah, decrease it for me. The man kept asking. He kept asking. Supplicating to Allah. Until it became one. 
حتى صارت واحدة. And then that one, فمتلا أتقبره عليه نارا. They hit him and they lashed him on that one. And his whole grave lit with fire. It started to burn. فلما ارتفع عنه أفاق فقال the man when he woke up from that lash and he came back conscious again. He looked and he said, على ما جلتموني. Why did you whip me for? Why did you hit me for? قالوا they said. إنك صليت صلاة you prayed a prayer بغير طهور you prayed a prayer without طهارة you were not on purity ومررت and you came by على مظلوم one who has been oppressed فلم تنصره you never gave him victory you saw an individual who has been oppressed a person who has been wronged a person something evil has been done and you saw it and you never helped him you never aided him عذاب القبر occurs because of this عذاب القبر Occurs on not helping a person who has been oppressed. Ikhwani, one of the things that cause adab al qabr is Hajr al Quran al Kareem. When a person he he does hijrah from the Quran and he leaves the Quran and his recitation. And this, the other one is and no mu an salat al maktuba, sleeping from the obligatory prayers. And both of them were mentioned in the long hadith of Samurat ibn Jundumin radiallahu ta'ala anu. That the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two angels, they took the Prophet and they were showing him the punishments of so many different people. And these punishments were adab al-qabr. أَمَّا الَّذِي يُثْلَجُ رَأْسُ بِالْحَجَرِ A man whose head was being hit with a rock. The Prophet asked, he said, who is this man? Why is he being punished for? And they told him. فَإِنَّهُ يَأْخُذُ الْقُرْآنَ فَيَرْفِضُهُ He's a person who took the Qur'an and he left its recitation. وَيَنَامُ عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ الْمَكْتُوبَةِ And he used to sleep from the obligatory prayers. Dhuhr comes, he's sleeping. Asr, he's sleeping. Maghrib, he's sleeping. He sleeps from the obligatory prayers. Ibn Hajar said, وَيَحْتَمِلُ أَنْ يَكُونَ التَّعْذِيبُ عَلَى مَجْمُوعِ الْأَمْرَيْنِ تَرْكُ الْقِرَاءَةِ وَتَرْكِ الْعَمَلِ is each one separately or is it both together? Ibn Hajar said it, can, it takes as though that, that both of them together is why he's been punished. Al kadhibu lying. Lying causes adab al qabr. The long hadith of Samura ibn Jundum radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa the two angels they took him, they came, they brought him somewhere else. They brought him to a man. الذي أت وأما الرجل الذي أتيت عليه يشرشر شدقه إلى قفاء. His cheek was being ripped to his neck. Metal rod was being put here and it was being ripped to his neck. Um, and his eye to his neck. All of those was what. And ها ومن خره his neck his nose to his uh, neck. فإنه الرجل يغدو it's a man who early morning he leaves his house فيكذب he lies كذ الكذبة a lying تبلغ الآفاق it reaches the whole world he puts it on Facebook he puts it on Twitter he puts it on Instagram a lie and he makes it up and then it goes around the whole entire world um الزنا الزنا brothers is what causes عذاب القبر the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the angels, they took him and they showed him a men, a group of men and a group of, and a group of women in a furnace. They are in a tanur, a furnace, a, the place where the bread is made. They're inside it. But adab, fi misli bina it tanuri. Fa innahum zunat. It was told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these were the fornicators and adulterists. Was zawani. They were, out, they were naked and they were not wearing anything. The narration, what does it mention? It mentions that they were screaming and they were making so much noise. فَإِذَا فِيهِ لَغَطٌ وَأَصْوَاتٌ They were wailing, ah, screaming because of the fire that's burning them. All of that is because of their zina. Their private parts were burning. The fire was burning them from beneath because that's where they were trying to. Why, were they, why was the whole body being burnt? The hikmah and the wisdom Ibn Hajar says is because when the person commits zina, the whole body feels it and the whole body enjoys it. So the whole body is being bad. Ikhwani, what causes adab al-qabri is akhlu riba 
eating riba, interest, usury, all of those. The long hadith of Samurat ibn Jundubin, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَأَمَّا الرَّجُلِ الَّذِي أَتَيْتَ عَلَيْهِ يَصْبَحُ فِي النَّهْرِ وَيُلْقَمُ الْحَجَرِ فَإِنَّهُ آكِلُ الْرِبَى A man who is swimming huh, in a river of blood and then a rock is being thrown at, his, at, at him and then his head cracks open. This one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, is the آكِلُ الْرِبَى The one who ate riba. He's been punished every time his head gets back to normal. They throw the stone at him again and he's swimming inside it. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim in his book Kitab Al-Ruh Ibn Al-Qayyim in his book Kitab Al-Ruh he mentions the Asbab Al-Adhab Al-Qabr in details and he also mentions what saves you from it. He mentions the Asbab Al-Adhab Al-Qabr and he talks about Al-Asbab Al-Manjiyyatu Al-Munjiyyatu Al-Munjiyyati the things that save you from it. In his book الروح. So if you want uh, to increase and see more, inshallah ta'ala you can see it there more. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka.